So um, I just wanted to talk about why why I kind of joined the Datathon. Um, my background is biochemistry, and I also have a master's in bioinformatics. So I was actually really interested to see what a, a Datathon was. Um, I've never done one before, and plus I also volunteer for the uh, the foundation. So I thought, you know, why don't I kind of do both? I spoke with Pfizer. Um, the, the team in neuro, and there were a couple people that were supposed to join, and unfortunately, due to conflicts, they couldn't come. So um, I was kind of briefed on, in general, what kind of biomarkers to look for, and, and so um, I kind of, you know, I worked with them to, to kind of do this project. Um, our team, let me, let me see if I can get it. All right, I'm copying it over now. I should just save it. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> Trying to do two things at once. All right. And then. Dave Boris is still working on his slides. He's actually done. Yeah. No pressure. No pressure. Okay, here we go. Okay. So I'll just eject it now. What did I do? Why is it next? Actually, did it work? Yeah, um, the people actually, I can, I have a little bit of notes. So, um, the people on our team, actually, Sherry was on our team briefly. Um, Eric. Um, Aslikin from Poima, I guess. Yeah. Um, Eugene from Thomson Reuters, myself. What is it? Oh. Forward back. Okay, thanks. Um, Mark from, from Michael J. Fox and Alex from um, Axon and then Evo, actually, from the University of Michigan. So there's a nice, um, you know, group of, of individuals. And I actually do want to talk about how at the end of this and I'm still kind of in talks with Eric because there's there's a paper that we're we're actually trying to to move forward. Um, it's just been really slow recently. I haven't really. I need to get back in touch. Um, okay. So well, we actually had two groups uh, within our our team. Uh, we had two ideas. The first idea was to categorize PPMI subjects through the PPMI uh, data set using um, dystonia and dyskinesis as measurements against brain shape formation. Um, and the second is identifying gene signature differences between normal and um, Parkinson's and then eventually comparing that to Alzheimer's. So uh, most of the team actually disbanded uh, after the first, after the first um, day and so the only project that kind of had legs was, was the second. Um, and this is the, the presentation for that. So this was actually more <clears throat> headed by Eugene, and so I'm I'm not really able to to say much scientifically about this because I was actually in the, the first group um, working on that project, and then I actually was starting to help the foundation a little bit. So um, I will try to try to make some um, comments on this, but I kind of will read through the slides. <laughs> So took a group of geo studies, and these are, he's how um, Eugene was highlighting what he used. Okay. These are some assumptions that Gene made, and the good thing was that he was he was able to use a couple of um, Thomson Reuters applications to to do this, which is really nice. Um, he's using chemparise compar uh, comparison. This is the differentially expressed genes for each study. These are the top genes, which is actually really interesting. Um, he was, I remember him telling me that he wasn't sure if these were functionally relevant, but these are the ones. There's a list of 534. This is enrichment analysis. Pathway maps enrichment. This is the Metacore KPI application that was used. And these are the results. Having LRK2 in neurons and regulation of GSK3 beta in bipolar disorder ranked 5 and 6. This is Gene Go. 
tableau analysis, actually. It's a heat map. And the conclusion, so the 534 gene signature is enriched with genes associated with neurodegenerative. There are a lot of genes that have never been associated with Parkinson's. Potential novel biomarkers were found and could be applied to subtype Alzheimer's patients. So again, I'm sorry I can't comment a lot on the, the science of, uh, yeah, sure. So one of the things I was really intrigued by in this, this study was looking at how you can take a differentially, the most highly expressed differential genes in Parkinson's. And then that defined a subgroup of Alzheimer's disease patients, which you can see here, which one of the key theses behind Alzheimer's and Parkinson's is that these are relatively unrelated diseases. And yet you can find that you can subdivide these patients in the medium classes using one gene set to apply to the other. And this is from whole blood gene expression, so it was, I found it really interesting. And then when you look at the genes that do that, they're all related, but they're all coming up as pathways and ways to neurogenic disease. So it's a quite interesting uh, look. Uh, I think that when you look at, at, at two different neurodegenerative diseases, what people tend to think is each disease is a completely distinct disease process. And yet when one looks at characterizing these, they have a lot of similarities. This is one of the first examples I've seen that's been done. That was quite important. Thanks, Yeah, thanks. Okay.